Hey studiers, welcome back to the channel. Now this is another one in the series of looking at dissertation proposal and I've got an excellent example for you today. It's a, an actual application and this is from the Scottish Graduate School of Social Science. So I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say about it. Do you think it's a good proposal? What are the weaknesses or what are the strengths? I'm gonna scroll through it on my computer screen. There's some extra bonus at the end where I'm gonna tell you some feedback that the actual supervisor gave the proposal. And it's really positive and worthwhile sticking around for so turning to the document here, we've got a, a document from the ESRC doctoral studentship from the Scottish Graduate School of Social Science, and I think they're the largest funder of postgraduate research in, in Scotland. The document has been anonymized, so we blanked out whoever this person was, and this was freely accessed online, and I'll, I'll put the link down below for you to access it as well. So in this initial part then, we've got a summary, and here then they talk about the central banks of the biggest economies, and how they have a mandate for thinking about about price stability. So we can see that the focus of this dissertation is going to be on central banks, and in particular the monetary policy, and how these banks make the various decisions that affect interest rates. What are the various variables that they take into account? And what quantitative forms of measurements do they use to dictate policy and make these decisions chiefly regarding interest rate paths? host to shed light on the behavior of central banks, how they make these decisions, how they've been made in the past, and what is the consistent monetary policy rules which they might be adopting and following. Also, how stable have these policies been in reaction to functions over time and regarding different countries? Okay, so that gives us a nice overview. Now moving on to the next part here. Okay, so this is the actual essence of the proposal here. And remember, proposals normally follow the same structure and format of giving an overall view and context of the reasoning about why it's worthwhile to research this area. Also then we'd be expecting to see something on methodology, maybe something on the ethics, and also the justification or the rationale for carrying out the research. So let's read out some of this in the overview. This research proposal outlines a consistent methodology to investigate the evolution of monetary policy using Bayesian inference and lies in the intersection of the fields of applied monetary economics, computational statistics, and Bayesian econometrics. Remember at the end, we've got some feedback from the actual supervisor of the student on what they thought of this proposal and did they support it or not. So stick around for that. In this next section of the proposal then, they talk through some of the key questions that they want to be looking at and the significance of doing it. The main research question here focuses on whether there is significant evidence of a generalized type of monetary policy rule which might potentially vary over time that can explain how the monetary policy stance is determined by a central bank. So we've got the main question there and then we've also got a subset of questions here which link onto that all kind of revolving around this area of monetary policy rules and how these decisions are made and stances are determined by central banks. What we move on to then now is this context where the student has set out theoretically with support of sources and literature their understanding of monetary policy and where this aligns itself with interest rates. I've pointed out some seminal papers by Taylor in 1993 this context is really setting the foundations for understanding the literature around monetary policy rules for setting nominal interest rates. It's well written and well structured, it's coherent, it's well formulated, and throughout we can see that he's arguing for a positioning for this own person's research. As we scroll down here then, they also look at more recent studies, which also focus on those that have used the Bayesian model of averaging. In this paragraph here, they're also demonstrating perhaps criticality of Taylor's rules parameters and how other authors have tried to challenge this and explain different weaknesses within this. I'm gonna come down now further and look at the methodology. What we can see and what is demonstrated is this student has really fashioned together a substantial amount and a great understanding of the methodology of quantitative analysis and different statistical methods. They're demonstrating a solid grasp on econometrics and in particular different studies on banking and they're showing different ways and possibilities of exploration using different statistical modeling. They've used different tools such as inflation forecasting applications and have supported this with the scholars who have used this. As we scroll down, this further discussion of different quantitative methods, it's a really substantial piece of working which really supports the initial research question and also the literature, and together they really form a watertight and excellent proposal. 
and then they've drawn together the sources or bibliography which they could be using for the particular study. I'm sure those who operate within monetary policy, econometrics and banking studies will be familiar with some of the Bayesian inferences and some of the modeling and some of the work that have gone on in this area. Extensive array of literature. Here then they've also drawn together a timetabling of when they'd be expecting to carry out the research. And what is my opinion? It's structured well. You can see that this person is demonstrating excellent methodological rigor, their knowledge of quantitative analysis, and also in Bayesian methods is at a really high level. There's a real nice fit between what is being proposed in the research question, looking at how banks set about the agenda of interest rates and how this is informed. They're using the correct methods, they're grasping the literature, they're looking at it in a critical way. The flow of it, the linkage, the continuum throughout the proposal is at a really high standard and I'm sure when we turn over to what the supervisor says I'm sure they're going to be very supportive of wanting to supervise this student. So let's turn to what the potential supervisor had to say in support or disagreement of this proposal. So this is a really interesting part to see because this is a statement in support of the student's work and what does it tell us? So this is written by a potential supervisor and I'll read it out to you. This student is a strong student who I would be happy to offer extensive supervision through organizing a set of readings relating to his research, helping as he learns the necessary computer programming and reading and commenting on drafts of his work. His topic is closely related to my own research interests. I have extensive experience relating to the student's research topic, which has led to numerous academic publications and collaborations with policymakers in particular central bank researchers. Through his MSc coursework, he will have learned the necessary background skills to do a PhD in his field. He has written an excellent research proposal on important and timely issues relating to the manner in which central banks implement monetary policy. The plan outlined in the proposal shows a good grasp of the econometric methods necessary to address the research questions. The research involves the development and implementation of state-of-the-art Bayesian econometric methods and using them in an important field. This is exactly the combination of academic theory with real-world impact which should lead to a fine PhD dissertation that I am happy to supervise. There is clear scope for the academic contribution from this project to permeate practice within central banks and my experience working with central banks will allow me to provide support to the student realizing this impact. Well, how's that for a seal of approval? That's gained massive support from the supervisor. They couldn't really have offered greater praise for what the student had written. A really interesting insight into what a supervisor thought of this proposal and how we can say at the end that this was a really strong proposal. There's lots that we can learn, not only in the structure, but in the rigorous nature of this proposal. How the student has set about finding an important research question, supporting it with literature, and then finding the correct quantitative methods where they could really explore the data that they're going to find. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you find it useful. Hope you enjoyed the session. Cheerio studiers.